Hmm. <laughs> So we set our motivation to do whatever we possibly can to attain the peerless state of enlightenment in order to benefit sentient beings. We know that to, to attain this state, we must perfect all the trainings on the Bodhisattva path. And to perfect those trainings, we need to have a good understanding of them. And to get that good understanding, we need to study and learn what they are. And so it is with this in mind that I am here to listen to some verses from just such a text as composed by the great master Shanti Deva, known as the Bodhisattva's Way of Life. And so then as we are <laughs> studying this text in conjunction with meditation, we set up our merit field. Uh, which consists of, in fact, our own root guru, but here in the aspect of uh, the Guru Manindra Shakyamuni Buddha, the one skilled in means and greatly compassionate, uh, seated in the Vajra posture, holding an alms bowl filled with nectar. And then all around us, our, our kind mo father, mother, sentient beings, uh, beginning with the parents of this life and the one previous to this, previous to that, previous to that, going right back to beginningless time and uh, countless rebirths. And we really try to perceive that all sentient beings are present here without exception. Mosumkora and so the figure we are visualizing as the merit field is the Guru Manindra, uh, as we said, seated in the Vajra posture with an arms bowl filled with nectar, uh, the right hand touching, uh, when the air touching mudra, the left hand holding that arms bowl in, in meditative equipoise posture. Um, that also uh, the figure that we are visualizing is marked by three syllables um, the om at the crown, ah at the throat, and the hung at the heart center. 
Uh, from all three syllables then emanate a countless rays of light going out into all the realms of existence and uh, purifying all the sentient beings in those realms of of sickness of Ill, Ill, illness of uh, the uh, negativities and obscurations that they have accumulated and so on and this uh, the virtue accruing from such an act and is offered to all the buddhas of the three thousand realms and then this offering is accepted and uh, the uh, the buddhas are seen to enjoy the bliss which combines with voidness and they abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness what <laughs> So then from these 3,000 realms of Buddhas, uh, the, uh, their qualities are embodied in their, uh, uh, in the kind of emanations that arise from them in their own aspect. Uh, these emanations come and dissolve into the Guru Manindra in our merit field. And that uh, we really feel that they become um, non-dual, they become completely one. And so that uh, we really feel that these wisdom beings have uh, really dissolved into our own root guru, into the Guru Manindra that we are visualizing in front. And then the light rays emanate from our Guru Manindra again, this time inviting back the empowering deities from their natural abodes. Uh, they arrive and they bestow the nectar of empowerment, uh, some of which overflows at the crown, spontaneously producing the figure of Akshobhya. What did the What did the ตะกะจะเออเอาเดี๋ยวตะกะจะเอาละมาตัวเอาบ่ได้กุศลตัวเยอะเด้ and so by reflecting on the qualities of the Guru Manindra as the merit field, we developed a triple faith, pure faith, manifest faith, and faith of conviction. And then when we focus on all the sentient beings all around us, uh, we recall how all have been uh, acting as our mother, how uh, they have been tremendously kind when the, this very intense desire to repay that kindness uh, leading to affectionate love, a love for all sentient beings. And then the love uh, wishing to place all sentient beings in happiness and the compassion wishing to remove all sentient beings from suffering and that leading to the exalted intention of taking personal responsibility to do this uh, for all sentient beings only to realize that we are very limited and we can't do this properly even for one now uh, but uh, when we check the status from which we can uh, truly fulfill such a, an aspiration we realize that it is the state of enlightenment, uh, the, the state of uh, Buddha. And so we renew our determination to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Well, 
Yegi açı la çoğusu o samsa. Ay yonsu çoğu bale, tabi ki bu nyakın vata, rangi nyingi yusun ya so samsa vatine kumba çağım. And so we we try to keep that uh, aspirations uh, to place our placement meditation focus on that a desire to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings and from that aspiration arises the the seed syllable a ah, and that a ah transforms into the moon disk mandala seed at our heart center. <laughs> จาจูกะสิมจาจูกะดาสิมเจทําเจกะตุนตุสันเจกะกุมบาทําเจกะลอดติวะตาราจูละเกเนอปาตาจุนนามะตังเกเมสันเจกะกุมบามาตอปาต
And again, we pause to rejoice here. This is something uh, really wonderful. We have established that the uh, the self itself is something that is not uh, self-powered. It is, uh, you know, uh, that uh, it is something which is, uh, in the way in which it exists, is something that arises mm -hmm. in dependence. Uh, this is crucial. Uh, this is very, very good because if it was uh, self-powered and there was nothing I could do to change things, but uh, apart from having a good intention or a good mind, I would not be able to really uh, make decent progress. But this fact of the way in which the self exists is something which is arising in dependence is fantastic because it validates every effort I make. It makes it very worthwhile. Um, and that then I have these twin minds of the mind of enlightenment and the uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness uh, that I will never, ever give up. And I will do everything in my power 24-7 to not allow them to degenerate, but in fact to generate them more and more until they become uh, uh, unartificial. Like, I mean, really genuine to the point of a realization of emptiness and a realization of the, the mind of enlightenment. And... I want to make this pledge, this vow right here now in front of the, the Guru Manindra to I, I will never, ever give up on these two mind states. I will never give up on trying to refine and extend and deepen uh, my understanding and my application uh, of of these two. And so like when we request the blessing and so on of the gurus and the, the great masters and uh, that have gone and are with us now, uh, we should really uh, be requesting very specifically for our uh, blessing in order to be able to uh, really fulfill these two intentions of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness, that we will be able to reflect on them, that we will develop them and habituate to them, and that we will be able to perfect these mind states as quickly as possible, that the obstacles to our practicing may be removed, that the, all the conducive um, conditions for us to really develop these mind states into realization are uh, present and that uh, we this should be the main reason uh, for our requesting blessing if we are to request blessing that uh, because this is the most important job at hand what <laughs> Mazacha <laughs> And so it's a, therefore, it's um, <clears throat> this mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness, uh, the, like the, the basis, the, the foundation for us in everything we do, even from the temporary uh, benefit to us to our ultimate benefit. These two mind states will be with us uh, right till the end. And that, uh, you know, as we pray that, that they are not, uh, that they are those, that which is not generated, may it be generated and that which has been generated, may it increase uh, more and more. Uh, and we, again, 
uh, endeavor to do this uh, directly, indirectly, in every possible uh, situation, and in particular now, at the moment when we are about to listen to some uh, mind training verses from this great text, the Bodhisattva's way of life, uh, we renew our dedication to the generation of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness. <laughs> Pungsati, Tinanata <coughs> And so really it is, uh, you know, for these two mind states, the mind of enlightenment and the, the wisdom realizing emptiness is where we should focus all of our effort. Um, because this should be the main heart practice of our lives. And that uh, when we talk about making our life meaningful, there are many different uh, stages or different um, um yeah, stages of meaning uh, that one can make of one's life. But if one dedicates one's practice completely, this hard practice of um, doing everything we possibly can to increase the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness, this will lead to the highest form of meaningful life you can lead. And that uh, therefore we should really focus all of our efforts and uh, in, a, in our practice to increasing uh, these two mind states. Well, don't Chanjusangumazuna, <laughs> So when we when we put this in perspective, we can see that um, <clears throat> if we do not imbue our actions or virtues uh, with the uh, mind of enlightenment and uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness, that then that will lead to our virtue uh, not really having the results that we really wish for. For example. If we fail to imbue uh, our motivation with the wisdom realizing emptiness, then whatever virtue that we gain will only lead to rebirth in cyclic existence. 
it's limited uh, into uh, being to uh, to a ripening in cyclic existence. And so uh, this is virtue we were talking about here, you know, whatever about negativity that we are engaging in. Of course, that leads to uh, lower rebirths. But um, the this is important to, to realize that the degree to which our virtuous intention uh, and the the, the the quality of the virtue that we engage in being so anemic is due to the fact that they are not directed by uh, our understanding of the, uh, the the wisdom of selflessness or emptiness. And when our motivation is uh, is not imbued with the mind of enlightenment intention, and uh, then we will not attain the omniscient state of enlightenment. It, it, that virtue cannot reach that far. Um, therefore, it's extremely important, as you can see, that we are. it is necessary to imbue all our actions with both of these mind states, that whatever virtue that we are engaging in uh, should be motivated uh, by the, an understanding of it as being an, 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 uh, of the wisdom of selflessness and the and the purity of its intention uh, being for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so we can see just how important then it is to habituate to uh, to understand and to become ever more familiar with these two mind states. <laughs> <laughs> So we had arrived at a third subheading, uh, which is um how to apply the power of joy in our practice. And the verse number 66 uh, details this with a beautiful simile. Thus, in order to complete this task, I shall venture into it. Just as an elephant, tormented by the midday sun, plunges into a cool, refreshing lake. What <laughs> And <laughs> Yo and so so this is uh, the uh, <clears throat> the example really of how we need to enter into our virtue so that you know we can have um anything on the virtuous side there are many different types of virtue and various virtues that we can do but we need to imbue our motivation at the outset with the, the uh, motivation to attain liberation and the omniscient state of enlightenment uh, this is a very very important 
and then to be able to enter into that uh, with joy you know it's kind of like we are again have uh, have ourselves really set up well we set our motivation we uh, enter into the task uh, we bring that task to completion and then we dedicate uh, the virtue uh, thereafter. This is the way in which to engage in a virtuous act. And that uh, here it's, it's referring to the, the uh, elephants caught in the midday sun, tormented by the heat, uh, when they um, sense water and, and moving towards it, they kind of enter into uh, the cool, refreshing lake with uh, great uh, relish and enjoyment and it's kind of like this is the the point here that when we see a point see an opportunity for virtue and that we take it with that same sense of a relish and enjoyment uh, in uh, what we're doing and to do it like correctly the, the fourth the fourth point is the power of of really taking a break and uh, this has two subheadings mm -hmm. one is a temporary um cessation and then uh, a, a more permanent one so that uh, with regard to the first, uh, a more temporary kind of a relinquishing of virtue is to, uh, is the first half of verse number 67. When my strength declines, I should leave whatever I am doing in order to be able to continue with it later. and so here it's um, it's saying that uh, you know as beginners we have limitations uh, to our uh, capacities so you know, and particularly when we are uh, shackled by uh, contaminated aggregates of body and mind in fact that, that uh, this body needs sleep this body needs rest and so on and therefore um from time to time we will need to take a, a break the the important point in this is that yes um to to be able to take a break is skillful but it is done in the spirit that once we have taken a break then we will get back to uh, quickly uh, get back to quality practice again and to keep that quality is very very important here so it's saying here when the body and mind are, are, are tired and when one's effort uh, de and degenerates a little and then yes we uh, can take a break but again with the determination to get back into that uh, task that virtue again and uh 
here it's akin to Genlis pointing out that when beginners begin meditating and uh, that is trying to develop uh, mindfulness and 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 uh, a focused attention uh, the advice and very skillful advice is that they do short uh, sessions quite short uh, but they do uh, many of these short sessions so this is in order to um focus on quality of session rather than a duration of session. And then, of course, once one becomes more habituated and one more, can sit more easily and so on and can focus more readily, then one can slowly uh, lengthen uh, mm. the sessions. This is a very skillful advice. And the same goes for our engagement in virtue um, to um, continue <laughs> to push ourselves from, um, you know, um, short, sharp um, virtues into uh, something that can be more and more meaningful. And so then the second of these was a more a definite uh, um, stopping of a virtue. Um, the second half of verse 67. Having done something well, I should put it aside with the wish to accomplish what will follow. ちょっとね、ngamate Zetotonicon, so here it's saying that uh, once we have finished, uh, we can put uh, one uh, so it's again like doing stuff it's really taking a professional and ordered approach to practice when we finished one subject and then it's saying one gets on to uh, the higher and higher more exalted um subjects and this is in the context of say um a meditation when we're looking at the graduated path to enlightenment uh, which begins with how to rely properly on a, a spiritual teacher and so that's quite an involved topic and we kind of meditate uh, on the different parts of that and then we become familiar with that we kind of reach a point of of really um having in how do you say internalized uh, that then we move on so that's left aside now we finish that and then we go on to the uh, teachings on a precious human rebirth and uh, how that is attained and so on how rare it is and so on and and really meditating and internalizing that as an inspiration uh, for the next uh, topic which is uh, uh, debt and impermanence and so on so here it's saying that yes we do things in the right order to with the right extent and and uh, with always the best of focused quality that we can muster <laughs> Yeah. 
Chimada chima to a chatter, no matter the what simana, tele chima de tele and chima, so gone upon the cover, power now chuba. Chuba deve, no matter, pomba chawasha was a reporter that said to the two head, pomba chawasha was a tat niba. Niba jamba the shishing gears, a shishing chuba yam so lawa, so lamba la nacha, bayo so lamba, jamba the shishing so lamba, ten shakes and neve cup, niwa. Never join a demata to Tobachawa. And Rigue Lele, Rigue Lela Pebacha watch up. So the next major headline or outline is the um, how to engage in practicing the mental factors of mindfulness and um, alertness how to do so readily. Um, this has got five subheadings. And the first of these is how to readily practice conscientiousness. Secondly, uh, how to readily practice mindfulness and alertness. And thirdly, and then how to be able to apply mindfulness and alertness and uh, never to give um, negativity um, uh, an opportunity. And fourth, is uh, if such a fault arises, then uh, how to deal with it immediately. And finally, number five is the effort that arises from establishing all this true reason. Bayu then go to catch Mojas with the Bayu who Lebane, Tanya Dada, Tenjito, you more recall Havashi, no more Tuller Sunjashi, no more Tan on Jumba Tucks. And so the first of these is then how to readily kind of give rise to, to conscientiousness. Verse number 68. Just as an old warrior approaches the swords of an enemy upon the battlefront, so shall I avoid the weapons of the disturbing conceptions and skillfully bind this enemy. Pechana Boxing second is that in the red one. Double two should have cut up the the chin. And at the net, cook up the last of the up the chicken What a chicken door. What other? What did they sooner? Oh, Connell, a part of a chumba chavasha, no more churn, churn, sudo, you are chavasha. That rings up, that rang in yam yung tenner, that didn't in yam yung tenner, no more water watch, and no more condition of yongo, water watch, and no more would turn the sozola maho at the Mahotan and your mobile tunnel, Shoba, Tabich, and a change it done at Della Asa, Yawachos, what are the nigger? And it got the Taka Jaja, no mobile, no mobile, no mobati, Rangitai by mercy, and your monk get on the Kennesky to tell your monster Ranga Samotan out on a game good one. No more the children came than your mother and Rolled Tuba. And some low chalk condition and in your monkey to a ten your and so here the uh, the image of the the warrior 
the warrior, the experienced warrior. And of course, we're looking at uh, historical war here where uh, people actually met on the field of battle. And um, here it's the, uh, sk you, the, the, the skill one has gained over time with one sword that is really of utmost importance. So first of all, you engage your defensive skills to prevent yourself from being uh, speared or cut. Um, and then mm -hmm. you, uh, you, you can ap apply your attacking skills. And so again, it's a, a likening it to boxing as well, isn't it? There's a great uh, emphasis on a defensive um, skills in boxing where you prevent the other person from uh, getting a good punch through. And then um, when you do see an opening, then you can land the telling punch. And so uh, this is very much in line here with the, the point of this image. Here uh, we are um, becoming an expert um, with regard to a mental affliction. Uh, we are become incredibly aware uh, when and how mental affliction uh, arises um, and that uh, we can, uh, one, again, use our defensive tactics to avoid it. Um, um, and, and our kind of conscientiousness really takes us into that territory. And then we can apply, um, and after all, you know, mental affliction is an inner issue, not an outer issue. So we have that uh, capacity uh, with our conscientiousness to, to spot the danger and to um, step to one side, as it were, in, in avoiding uh, the damaging um, uh, effects of mental affliction. Uh, mindfulness and alertness are very useful here as well. And uh, these then um, ensure that on the one hand, we are not harmed uh, by mental affliction. Then we can apply our own weapon of the antidotes uh, in order to, uh, to destroy any kind of capacity that that mental affliction thought it might have. So what we do is <clears throat> initially in order not to give the upper, the mental affliction the opportunity, we employ our defensive uh, tactics. So we're we're blocking any chance of the mental affliction taking hold. And once we get good at that defense, then we can go on the attack. And what we're really talking about here is generating uh, the antidote to the self grasping at, at, at a non truly existent self, which is the root of a mental affliction. And we can really aim to cut the root of uh, a mental affliction. And uh, that is our offensive um, attitude. <laughs> Missouri Negative 
Tell So, for example, so if we're talking with somebody, then we start of like, you know, we're kind of at the beginner stage, and then when, you know, there is, is a that, of course, it's always best to stop it um, at the outset. Um, but if not, then it may get to a point where we we can't really um it, it say this is in our friend where we're talking to um it becomes more and more difficult to talk them down uh, once the mental affliction has arisen um and and indeed every word that you use at that point might be misinterpreted as a negative and that uh, again the situation is not helped um so from the outset it is always best not to give mental affliction the opportunity uh, to arise. And this becomes the job of your mindfulness and alertness to really spot the path along which mental affliction uh, may travel and uh, to get, therefore be able to get in early. Right? Um, very important here to emphasize the positive over the negative. If we're uh, very much inclined to be negative, uh, that is like opening a door to mental affliction. But if we can um, see the positive, uh, again, that again, it, it kind of reduces the energy of mental affliction. And that's important to take into account. So when, especially when we're talking about helping somebody who um, may be uh, at risk of mental affliction, uh, that... Um, we need to use our talk to really support them uh, to not um, agree with their negative perception of life, uh, but to actually be much more positive and to point out uh, how one can look at it from a different point of view. Because um, if we are supporting their negative uh, point of view, we are simply supporting their mental affliction. And that is not what we want to do. And uh, that is the same for ourselves, that we do not want to give um, any, any, any opportunity to mental affliction. Um, if we are mindful and alert and we can you know, we know the path, we are familiar with how uh, mental affliction arises when we're in particular conditions and so on, then we, it is easy for us to deal with it. Uh, we can uh, avoid it. We can put a stop to it. Um, and uh, But if it arises, then we are dependent upon antidotes. And we need to apply those antidotes as firmly and as uh, rapidly as we can. No more better than a chamber, Tabichir, Tabichir, 
Ani çıgırsa, nembiyo çoğun jeyirsa, tam ne, nembiyo çoğun gıda ne, dele kewa çoğu olsa, o da nyomun bu eke kuka madde vaca, kuka madde vaca, çoğun ki, tam ne, dele kewa çoğu olsa da, o 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 ニョバキアバダラムジャンコンドテシュチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテチェテ
to go, oh, I'm feeling a little bit discomforted by what this person is saying or doing. Um, and so you, you immediately have this conversation with you said, oh, oh I got to be careful. Anger is on its way. And so I need to do something now. And uh, so you you act as early as you possibly can. And so you, you, you don't want to give this anger an opportunity. And you say that to yourself, you know, sorry, not today. I do not wish to give anger um, the light of day today. Um, and the, you, you want to kind of then put a stop to it completely. So at that early stage, you can actually do this. This is this is possibly, and then you know you don't you don't want to get into a conversation like the other the alternative you know where they're having a go at you when you're going, oh, man, I've done right by them for so long. Why are they criticizing me now? Why this negative attitude? And you get into this kind of a uh, personal um, offense. Uh, mode and that's kind of like you know you you immediately again again start feeding the possibility of anger in that situation that is not the approach to take uh, you need to uh, you can actually put it into a much bigger context to say that uh, you know as long as I have a, an acceptance of the law of cause and effect I do not meet with the effect if I haven't created a cause therefore these angry words that are directed at me now, I caused this in a previous time. I may not remember it, but I accept that this is, I have a part in what's going on here. And that uh, another um, good attitude to take is that this person who is using these negative words is not acting uh, uh, self-powered. You know, they're out of control. They're angry because that's why they're using these negative words. And, and you can see it from that kind of like the mode of existence point of view, but you can also see it from the point of view of compassion, because obviously they are creating a negative karma here and that, uh, you know, your compassion should arise in a situation like that for for them. And that once compassion arises, you see, it, it, it prevents any anger uh, from arising. And so you need to have these, these are, called mind training techniques and that uh, we we can really just use our own experience to see what what works for me in a situation like that um what can i do to prevent anger from arising or to really deal with it very quickly if it does arise um this means that uh, we are familiar with the faults of anger uh, we are uh, familiar with these particular um, uh, antidotes using uh, emptiness, using the law of cause and effect, um, using the fact that <laughs> that this person is actually out of control and they need compassion, not a, a negative reaction. And so this is, uh, from, again, we only can tell from our own experience, like what works best for us. And so then it behoves us to um use yeah that which works for us again and again until it becomes second nature a, a completely well embedded habit for us yeah 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 ただまあまあそうやってらららのばちげんたでららそばてるきれしにです。ほら、ランゲ、かさ、どんえんたんねんが、のじゃれ自慢にばそばて。だ、そばのすむよら。どんえんたんねんがそば、のじゃれ自
ดบัจจวะลาเตเนอะเนตีสเวญามเนจาวะนะเดเจริจิมันยิบสบัติกุตวะสบัติกุตวะโอตาราลันเดเจริจิมันยิบสบัติเอวิกิเวชินิเรว
with mindfulness and alertness, then we become become come aware of this great advantage we have over the afflicted uh, kinds of thinking that we have. Pantovacuto. So that's in the mind training teachings, then it is always um, uh, emphasized how incredibly kind sentient beings are. Um, not just when they're kind and helpful to us, but even when they're harmful in situations like this, because from the mind training perspective, they're simply providing us with an opportunity to uh, practice patience. And as such, it's absolutely invaluable um, and, and so kind uh, of sentient beings. And, that, and so therefore, whether beneficial or harmful, it's all the same from a mind training point of view. Uh, they are so helpful. And uh, we must always remember that whether a situation is feeding um, my own mental affliction or not is purely down to me, purely down to my own thinking. What way do I want to think about it? And that uh, that's the ultimate power we have in our control. So you can agree with the, the idea that when our minds are under the influence of mental affliction, even the benefit that somebody is trying to give us can be seen as harm. But when we are in control of our mental affliction, then even the harm that somebody does to us can be seen as beneficial. And so it's kind of like the beneficial, whether something is beneficial or harmful, is not an external issue at all. It's a completely internal issue, and it depends on the degree to which we have subdued our mind or not. So so same tuna and be Nangzi Tamja, so that now Tamja near the Jute again. So so same Matuba in a Nangzi Tamja, Jari Jute and Chadigua. And so once with a subdued mind, then it doesn't matter what arises, it is seen as a friend. And when the mind is not subdued, then no matter what arises, it can be perceived as an enemy. So it's kind of like this business is in our own hands. It's our responsibility. You know, we, we can't be farming this out to anybody else. Uh, this is purely our own personal responsibility. And so we have to see it like that. I have to do the work uh, that uh, of subduing my own mind, of controlling what is happening, because I am the only one who has that power. So, in these situations, then it's our own effort 
uh, that is going to pay off for ourselves. It's not anybody else's business or anybody else's effort that's going to help us to to gain control of our own mind. It's the work we do for ourselves. And when we do it well, when we are persistent and consistent at it, uh, then we can really see how meaningful and how beneficial that is. No, I did it. No, I did it. That's some uh, the second of these subheadings was then the ready application of mindfulness and alertness. Verse number 69. If someone dropped his sword during a battle, he would immediately pick it up out of fear. Likewise, if I lose the weapon of mindfulness, I should quickly retrieve it, being afraid of hell. Dirigazzo <laughs> Inna so here another example from uh, battles and war and so on and uh, you can see how uh, actual suitable uh, these examples are when you're dealing with mental afflictions it is like going to war um but um it's like going to war in the old days of course like uh, when you had to face your enemy um straight up on the battlefield not like today when you just press a button and you can bomb uh, indiscriminately and so here the example is uh, you're out in the battle, you're um, in the thicket of a battle and you drop your sword. Now, you're not going to waste a moment before trying to pick that up again but for fear of being killed. Um, and so here, the example is that, again, if we lose our mindfulness, um, um, our weapon of mindfulness, and we forget the antidote, and then uh, we should be as just as you know paranoid really about bringing it back to mind and putting it in place again in our mind out of fear of uh, the uh, lower realms of the sufferings of cyclic existence and the hell realms uh, that are all there for us and so it's again you know 
of course, in the in the battle that uh, the the assailant uh, who has dropped the sword is um is primarily thinking of themselves, isn't it? Obviously, they don't want to be killed out of you know intense self cherishing in that moment. Uh, they are going to uh, pick that sword back up in record time. Um, to prevent himself, their cherished self being killed. And so here, um, you know, we are thinking of the, the sufferings of cyclic existence and the hell realms, and we don't want to um, to fall into that kind of quagmire of suffering. And so we, we, we make the effort. And so here we, we knew we have to, like, really use our... Um, our um, uh, our capacity to um, bring back our mindfulness and our alertness in situations like that and to uh, as quickly as we can and so as to not uh, uh, fall into uh, that kind of quagmire of suffering. <laughs> <laughs> ก็ตัวเนี่ยโมเกี่ยวกับเดอะอันนี้คําตัวคําตัวคําตัวเนี่ยบ่เต็มตัวบ่เจ๋อเจ๋อคําตัวคําตัวเจ๋อเจ๋
of mental affliction and to really treat it like you know in in a kind of battle situation so that our first and primary um uh and, and, and kind of a, a primary task is to prevent a uh, mental affliction from arising and in this particular case you know we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard you know that uh I have dedicated myself to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. So if I am so quickly overcome by mental affliction, that makes me a complete laughingstock in the eyes of the, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in front of whom I made this vow. You know, it would be really very, very negative. And so you kind of like start that by, by saying to yourself, I'm not the kind of being who falls under the influence of mental affliction. And that, uh, so, and, and in this particular uh, instance, you know, the, the, the benefit of mindfulness and alertness cannot be overstated. Uh, they are uh, crucial uh, in keeping our minds from a falling or degenerating to the point of affliction. ตัสสุบะสุบะอาสะเตชิญญีเวกะมิยะวะเนสะสุบะเตชิญญีเวกะมิยะวะมิยะวะเนสะวะเลจิตตะทะละเตนเจเนตูเนลุเลชะบะต
And that's a similar Chaba Junior, the same on the Juni, Yabati Shangwan the Juni, and then Yaba Chungu Jam Magova Chibudas, Chungu Jiga Magova Chawacha. And so this, uh, the first of these uh, verses is discussing uh, how uh, poison uh, enters and travels in the, the body. So, for example, in the in the past, again, they would um, smear poison on the tips of the arrows, arrowheads. And then, then once that the, the body was pierced by that arrow, uh, then th that poison uh, would slowly, um, through the, the blood, uh, pervade the whole uh, body. And they're saying similarly, when even a, a small fault uh, arises in the mind and that it meets with no opposition, in other words, no antidote is applied, uh, it gets past our gateway of mindfulness and alertness, and then gradually that fault will pervade the mind as well. And so we are advised here to not allow ourselves to be tainted or stained even by the smallest fault. Kuyasal, <laughs> Tipper <laughs> Subsequent <laughs> So the the second verse is the image of the uh, the mustard oil carrier. And so again, I demonstrated there in those days. Indeed, uh, even still in in India, you see people carrying large jars on the head, and so this time it's uh, full of mustard oil, and uh, the carrier has a some sort of guard at, at their rear carrying a sword telling them that if they drop spill just one drop they will be killed and so they're they're carrying this incredibly mindfully obviously um you know uh under pain of of death lest they spill one drop so it's a with that type of conscientiousness with that type of discipline um those who are uh uh, have ethical vows should be um as as determined to keep their vows as that uh in in, in lest they uh, be killed as well and so this is the um, the meaning of the um the imagery and <laughs> 
Seva in a Mizijing Mavasur, that desamlua. Hop ten was a Seva said, She cheers Roger. No more singing, nobody was a Tonasha Yomare. In a no more, nobody should chat. And so here, in this particular image, you see that there's the danger to the carrier of the mustard oil. But they, looking into it, they have a risk of just losing that life. If they spill, uh, they will lose that life. But if you allow mental afflictions to overwhelm the mind, uh, then you're putting many lifetimes at risk. It's a much more powerful um, adversary than the uh, the um, the carrier of the sword who will kill you if you drop the oil. And so it's kind of like, and also, you know, you're talking about mental afflictions have all of these uh, results uh, that they have the ripening of all, a result of where you will be reborn, for example, in a hell realm. And uh, that is not a short stay. That is a much very, very long time where you will have to suffer there. And uh, should you escape or should you get out of hell realms, then you have to deal with the uh, the result that is in harmony with the uh, with the uh, experiential cause and with the habituational cause again, and giving you the likelihood of of acting in the same way again. So you have to overcome uh, that strong habitual tendency as well. And so you can see that mental afflictions are much more powerful than one person with a sword. Okay. Say, the other thing is that, yeah, we are very mindful if someone says that you're going to be killed if you drop some oil, uh, but we don't pay the same attention to mental affliction at all. We allow mental affliction to take over without even noticing. We don't see the fault. <laughs> So definitely, you know, the greater danger is in mental affliction, for sure. <laughs> so, and can you scan what's this? Seba dee, but not seba dee, so that, uh, and then, and then, even the, the the one who is killed in a situation like that it uh it arises from mental affliction as well uh without mental affliction then they would not be killed mm. so Yes, we, we, we don't pay nearly enough attention to that, if, which is the most dangerous of all, the mental afflictions. And so we kind of have to take a different attitude and to become much more fearful of mental affliction. <coughs> so we leave it at that for today. Okay. So again... We bring our minds uh, to uh, focus on the Guru Manindra in, as the merit field in front. And so we'll um, reflect on renunciation, how um, that's all of cyclic existence is in the nature of suffering, and if, and we get unless we gain release from cyclic existence. We will have to encounter a suffering again and again, and through this contemplation, um, then arises the syllable bam, which transforms into the um lotus mandala seat on our own crown, and then through the reflecting on how inner and outer phenomena all lack any objective existence and are merely imputed by thought, um, we. Uh, focus on that mere negation of the object of negation, giving rise to uh, the syllable hung, 
uh, which transforms into the sun mandala seat on our crown, and how that reflection itself um, uh, facilitates the the workings of karma, the law of cause and effect, and how we can not only envisage but also accumulate the causes to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, as symbolized by the syllable A, ah, which transforms into the moon mandala seat on our crown. <laughs> And then we utter the invocation verse thrice. O oh, glorious and precious root guru, come take your lotus and moon seed placed here on my crown. Keep me safe in your kindness. Bestow on me the attainments of body, speech, and mind. At the end of the first recitation, the figure moves from the, the merit field in the front. At the end of the second, they have arrived at our pre-prepared seat on the crown. And then at the end of the third, we have that certainty that the Guru Buddha will remain with us until we attain the state of enlightenment. And then we make the offerings of the seven limbs of practice and the mandala offering. <laughs> Uh <laughs> Uh, then we again establish the mandala seat at our own heart center by again reflecting on renunciation, how in the all in the three realms of existence, wherever we are born. Uh, there is no genuine happiness. And so we gain the desire for definite emergence from this state, uh, which gives rise to the syllable BAM, and that transforms into the lotus mandala seat at our heart. And then again, through reflecting on that all inner and outer phenomena lack any um, uh, objective existence, even at the atomical level, uh, producing uh, at the syllable hung which transforms into the sun mandala seat at our heart level. And that, in turn, supports the idea that we can attain the state of enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings, and that uh, we really want to quickly, quickly do that, and to gain that sense of conviction that this is not just possible, but probable for us. And that is the syllable ah, which transforms into uh, the moon mandala seat. And now we again offer the invocation verse to the Guru Manindra on our crown, O glorious and precious root Guru, come take your lotus and moon seat placed here at my heart. Keep me safe in your kindness, bestow on me the attainments of body, speech, and mind. At the end of the first recitation, the figure moves down into the central channel, and at the end of the second arrives at our pre-prepared seat. And at the end of the third recitation, we have again that a joyful certainty that the Buddha will remain until we attain the state of enlightenment. And then the, 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 the leaves of the, the lotus uh, fold over above the figure and are sealed at their tips by a white five-pronged vajra. And they, uh, that leaf package is now surrounded by three mantras. The name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha in a clockwise direction the mantra of Manjushri in an anti-clockwise direction and the mantra of dependent uh, arising in a clockwise direction. Good. 
这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个
the place that I am in is also transformed of all faults and becomes the pure realm of an enlightened being. And then seeing myself as a fully enlightened uh, Buddha uh, and, abs and also completely lacking any inherent existence, I sent out countless rays of light, equal in number to all of the sentient beings in all the realms of existence. And upon dissolving into them, these rays of light affect a complete purification of all their faults and they arise as fully enlightened Buddhas. Uh, their places also, wherever they are, are uh, purified of all contamination and they become uh, the pure realms of an enlightened being. I rejoice at this point uh, that I have uh, uh, been able to lead all sentient beings to that state of enlightenment. <laughs> And so this leading all sentient beings to that state of enlightenment and the virtue that has facilitated that, as well as myself as the agent of that virtue, again, all of which lack any objective existence and are merely imputed by thought. Uh, this again produces a state of bliss which combines with voidness and I again abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. Of course, we're operating at the level of imagination and aspiration here. Um, it's certainly not that easy to uh, reach this uh, state. But when we dedicate, we are doing so with absolute sincerity that we will quickly, quickly do whatever we can uh, to make it truly manifest. <laughs> And so, of course, uh, you know, to attain such a state uh, of enlightenment, this is our main objective. To do so, um, you know, we must develop the minds of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness. So this is absolutely crucial, as we pointed out. And that, um, how how is this done? What does this look like? You know, when uh, we are doing so, it means that we are absolutely dedicated to interpreting every situation that arises for us with through the lens of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness. This not only goes for moments of happiness, but especially for moments of suffering, or illness, or even at the point of death. Uh, we do not abandon the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness. And so we want to uh, practice it to the point where it becomes a fully qualified um, a state of in uh, fully qualified mind states that is a kind of like arising for us effortlessly and spontaneously, and uh, and we do this in a gradual way uh, to attain enlightenment in this sense, this way. <laughs> Oh, 
and Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, destroyer of hordes of demons without exception, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the sages of the land of snows, Rosang Drakpa, at your feet I make requests. Okay. That's all. No, <laughs> 